Michael Irwin. Nate Irwin. Doug Wesaka. <laughs> the funk zone. I, I used to, my old studio used to be next to Santa Barbara Scrap Iron and Metal, and so I had a lot of airplane parts and, and freeway signs, and I could just rummage around through there. Um, I had a studio out at UCSB from 1976 to 1979. Mm -hmm and finished my MFA out there and taught at UCSB. I taught ceramic sculpture. And then I found a studio space in McNall's building material on South Sequoia. So in 1979, I moved into the Funk Zone general area. Yeah. And um, most of the things that I was doing were these combines, like back there in the corner, um, or large shaped canvases like that one. And uh, I also did video documentation and performance art and installation art. Um, but then a, a gallery approached me and said they'd like me to do uh, five big paintings. And so I made, I'd never painted before because yeah. I was a sculptor and a video artist. And so I did five of those big shaped canvases and they all sold. And I thought to myself, I'm a painter. <laughs> I can paint. So um, I moved into this space in, 1989, um, a former student of mine, Janet Nancaro, own, who owned this block and sold it to the current um, Mesa Lane properties that's right. developing it. Um, I said, Janet, I need a studio space. And she goes, well, I've got this old Quonset hut. And I said, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I moved in here in, in 1989 and um, there was nobody down here. I mean, it was, yeah. it was, there was uh, one restaurant across the street that had music. And other than that, it was just um, um, a dive shop right. on the corner. It was, that did, you know, deep hard hat diving stuff. Oceaneering International, that's what it was, Oceaneering. And um, Donald Davis had a studio over on Anna Kappa. Mm -hmm. And other than that, there were no artists down here. But in the, the next 20 years, because this was an industrial area, people were able to afford moving into the funky little spaces like this that you could get down and dirty in. I've been fortunate to share the studio with a lot of really wonderful artists, Warren Schulteis, Johnny Troina, um, Chris Johnson, um, just a whole cadre of, of artists. Now I'm sharing it with my son Nate, and it's the best ever now. Yeah. Just, uh, we're just hoping we can stay here and keep the studio and keep the, being able to have a space like this where you can have shows as well as get funky. Yeah. Well, in the early 2000s, um, people started moving into the warehouse space here that Karen Lehrer's in and, right. and Marlon right. Daggett used to be in. It's just evolved into being a really vital area where we can studio visit each other and have conversations yeah. and um, it's just been really a wonderful place to be as an artist in the last 20 years. Yeah. So um, particularly now. So. It's just every vacant space here because it's the only place you can rent cheap. I mean everything else is five dollars a square foot and here it's 75 cents or 50 cents a square foot and nice. and we don't have any industrial space in Santa Barbara. And ironically, being as close to the ocean as it is and, and desirable property, mm -hmm. which is why they want to build five stories of condominiums here yeah. and shops. Um, all the shops are closed and we don't need any more shops yeah. and nobody can afford to live in the condominium. No. So it's, uh, yes. it's just such a wonderfully vital area right now with, with you know four or five different galleries here and um, 20, 24 different artists and studios here. Mm -hmm. It's just, it is the art center of Santa Barbara. Yeah. And without it, we would have nothing. I mean, really, there would, there, nobody could afford anything. Yeah. So, all the, all the spaces that are there. Hey, hey. Diane. Hey. Hey. How's it going? Hola, hola. We're, We're doing, doing an interview. interview. Come on in. Oh, the color. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Doug teaches at Laguna Blanca. Oh yeah? Yeah. My name's Doug Wasaka. <laughs> um, I moved here in 75 uh, to go to school at UCSB. That's how I originally met Mike. Um, I've been a 
Yeah, I went to school at UCSB as an art major. And what has your history with the punk zone been throughout your career as an artist? Uh, well, I knew that Mike had a had a studio here, so I used to come visit every once in a while when Warren was here, and I think Rex was here. Yeah. Rex was yeah. here. Rex Marchbanks, right? Yeah. And then, um, and then also the Arts Fund. I was involved with the Arts Fund quite a bit across the street. Right. Um, involved with their mentorship programs, as was Mike. And then, um, yeah, just try to support them and what they're doing because they were like the only art, well, art gallery here. I mean, it was right. the only piece of culture here, right. except for people's studios. This is yeah, just the blue collar area for like welders, pipefitters, awesome. carpenters, and everything like that. Yeah, boat shops. Yeah, for repairing engines and. Yeah. Yeah, industrial. Yeah. It's, uh, the only place left to go is the airport, and who wants to work out there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just still hard to find a space out there. It's yeah. hard to find a space. In, in a, comparable, a comparable space for you would be. Yeah, it would be it impossible. Exist. No, yeah. yeah, it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, it, it, it would be lovely if we could keep it. Um, I mean, I'm not opposed to people developing and being creative and trying to find ways to make more money and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. I mean, that, that has to happen, but it's just um, it's just a shame that it happens to be where every artist in Santa Barbara has a <laughs> studio.